Well, we're back on the track with the men's steeplechase and the Olympic champion. You can see there, El Bakali of Morocco. And the Olympic bronze medalist next to him, Benjamin Keegan of Kenya. But it'll be El Bakali who will start as favourite. They've asked for pretty good pace. They've asked for around eight minute pace. And I just wonder whether or not they'll be up for that, whether they fancy that. I think El Bakali would be happy just to sit and wait and kick Keegan. Uh, not joined and by one of two of his other teammates. And Wale himself uh, looks a bit chilly, doesn't he? Wale, who, having set off the season looking as though he could be one of the major contenders, only finished fourth at the Olympics, contested the 5,000 as well. And it was his teammate Gurma who came away with the medal, the silver medal, but he's not here this evening. So El Bukali, Keegan, Wale. Then you throw in uh, Abraham Kibiwat, Takele, who's a very, very talented young Ethiopian, just 19. Watch out for him here. Abdel Wahid of uh, Italy. Ran well in Florence earlier on in the year as well. Tinduf, Bet, and Hillary Ball of the USA make up the whole field here. And the pace, as I said, they looking for around 240 through the first kilometer Wilberforce Jones been given the job but at the moment don't look as though they're too keen to follow him he just had a little check around from that first hundred meters and he's just gone off sensibly which is good to see he's not uh, racing ahead sensing that the field haven't quite gone with him yet but they've got time to close that gap on the Wale doesn't look too keen. He's checked behind, isn't he? To say, well, come on, is somebody going to do this? Otherwise, I'm going to have to. I think that could be the understatement of the night. Steve Marley not looking uh, looking reluctant to be at the front of that pack. He's slowed it right down, and I think they slowed down behind him. And it's it's frustrating when that happens for you because they're saying, hey, you've gone out in front. You can just sit there. I'm not going to take it over when you don't want it. You can have it. El Bacali just tucking in there, almost jogging around this bend. That might be unfair because they were meant to be heading for 240. I don't think they're moving at anything like 240 tempo. That would be 64 per lap, per normal lap. That wasn't too far off, Tim, not for the leader anyway. Uh, but that's because always the first 100, 150 is quite quick. They've slowed down certainly since then. And then uh, that's the only lap we can take an actual 400 meter time. After that, of course, they're running less than 400 because the water jump on the inside here in Zurich. So the next split we will get will be the one kick well this has become quite pedestrian in this uh, steeple chase uh, the pacemaker jones has tried to get them interested and he went through 246 the main pack of more like 248 249 through the first kilometer and it hasn't got any quicker since then so it's keegan just leading wale just giving up the lead here at the last water jump bet came a little closer to Keeley, the 19-year-old talent, just behind El Bacali, who's happily sitting there watching and waiting, not interested in time tonight. They're running 8.30 pace. It will speed up, of course it will, but he just wants the win. A little stutter there, Wale again. He doesn't take the water jump particularly well. And, uh, always looks for a little bit of room. I don't know why that it, it wants a bit of sort of step out, take a bit of room, but Bet now moving into second place. We've still got the pacemaker out in front after five minutes of racing. He keeps he must be thinking, I might just keep going here. Steve, I know the name that's going through your mind, it's Tom Byers, <laughs> but he hasn't got a big enough lead. That uh, famous race what, in 1980 in Oslo when he was a pacemaker in the 1500 and they, they never caught him in the year. Uh, 81. Oh, just testing. I knew that really. But uh, yeah, unusual to be leading this far into the race, you're right. I mean, five and a half minutes on the clock. Well, Bet now has uh, decided uh, to close the gap, at least to the pacemaker, but he's, you know, at this point, you'd normally expect him to uh, be well distant, two kilometres approach. There you can see 2.51, 5.38 for that kilometre. Very, very slow indeed. And he, when he gets round here, he's only got two laps to go. So Joe, uh, he might just think, oh, I'm going to keep going here. Cones, Wilberforce, Corners, still with a 7-8 metre lead. Wale now moved into second place. Takele 
His younger teammate just following. El Bacali has always been giving himself a good sight of the barriers, hanging on the outside of the pack. Bet's been in and out and in and out. Finally, the pacemaker moves to the side. So, well, go on then, guys. Two laps, an 800 meter burn up here. For a few seconds, they're approaching that to two laps to go, Marco. I thought Konos was going to go for it. But he eases aside, and we've got a, a real race in our hands here, Steve. We've been spoiled with great racing here tonight. Fast times as well. This one won't be a particularly quick time, as you've made clear, but what a dust-up it's going to be over this last lap and a half. Four abreast, almost five abreast now. Yeah, Hillary Ball just on the inside on the curb as well. A little bit boxed at the moment. El Bacali can see everything. He, with that long stride and those long legs, he likes to get a good sight of the barriers, and he's doing that very well indeed. So just watch Wale here, he'll move out. Always puts his arm down on the inside, his left arm, as he approaches the barrier zone to say, give me room. And then this time takes it okay. But there's only 500 meters to go, Tim, and nothing happening yet. It's uh, the Olympic bronze medalist alongside Wale, finished fourth, of course, and then the Olympic champion. Now these three just start to stretch a little bit. Good to El Bacali there in third place, having negotiated the barriers so far. Remember in Paris a couple of weeks ago, he ran into a barrier on the first lap and injured himself. Well, hurt himself more than injured himself. Good to see him back racing, but uh, he's just got these guys in his sights, Steve. I wonder if he's got the legs. Well, he better get a shift on here because he's given them a little bit of a head start here. Keegan steals a march. Bet trying to chase. wallow has got nothing really. Looks over his shoulder and El Bacali might not be finished yet but he's got a lot of ground to make up because keegan is away and gone and at this point doesn't look as though anybody can catch him step out takes it nicely keegan over close to second el Bacali now begins his charge but surely he's left it too late too much to do one more barrier bit of a stutter there for the kenyan and they get really close here but keegan Stretches away again, El Bacali still charging. Keegan gets it, El Bacali second, misjudged for me. And he slapped his hands. I don't think that's him kind of applauding himself. That was him in frustration at why he let Keegan steal a march with 300 to go, had traffic to go around, having been in a great position all the way around. But well done, Benjamin Keegan. He took it by the scruff of the neck stuttered that last barrier, nearly threw it away, Tim, but just had enough. For athletes of this calibre, Steve, that's a slow race, a tactical race, and with 300 to go, Bacali, El Bacali giving several meters to the athletes in front of him. He really wasn't concentrating, coming through the bell and round that penultimate bend. And, of course, he's a 331.1500 meter runner. It's, a, it's easy to forget that about El Bacali. This summer, 331.9 he's run for 1500. He's got speed aplenty to defeat a field of this caliber, but he never gave himself a chance with uh, Keegan being able to kick away like that and steal 10 meters or more down the back straight. You know, Albert Carley's normally quite good, isn't he, at judging his finish? You know, just, uh, he's angry with himself, yeah, though, he, he is. Just, just went to sleep at the wrong time. So, that's, uh, I mean, you can't call it a massive upset, but it, normally El Bacali, when he races Keegan, would expect to come out on top. A big, big win for Keegan. Huge win, really. And uh, keep coming back to that point about Diamond League winners. Uh, sadly, it won't help Keegan because, of course, Capruto is the reigning.